Welcome to Harvest Center, downtown Buffalo, New York. It is cold. It is snowing. It is the most stereotypical Buffalo hockey weather you can imagine as the Buffalo Buttes prepare to play host here to the Connecticut Whale. Welcome inside our broadcast position alongside Eric Walschlager. My name is Jeff Boyd. Excited to be here with you this afternoon. Two teams looking to close out their year strong. Their last game of 2017 tied in the standings. Two teams that really struggled last week coming in off some losses. Yeah, it was a tough game for Connecticut against the Boston Pride. Boston was really able to to take it to them hard. They scored all their goals on the rush, and that's something that Buffalo can take advantage of here. Connecticut's definitely going to have to lock that down, not get caught on their heels, and drive it back uh, and play solid D, standing them up at the line if they're going to succeed today. A player who may be key for Buffalo taking advantage of that difficulty Connecticut's defense is having on the rush, coming off her first career goal here in the NWHL is Kristen Lewicki. Yeah, and a beautiful goal it was, you know, give and go off the dot, and she just waits for that screen, puts the puck where nobody's going to get it. Top shelf where Mama hides those oh so delicious cookies and uh, gets her first goal, you, you know, She's one of those players that Buffalo can take and score off the rush. And Buffalo's secondary scoring really going to be key here today. These teams tend to score a bunch of goals when they play each other. So Buffalo's going to need that second and third line. Players like Lewicki coming in off strong performances to continue doing so here today. For Connecticut, a big part of their response may be their captain, Sam Faber, the former yeah. U.S. team gold medalist trying to be a catalyst for their offense. Yeah, you know, Faber is a third-year player, which is really important in the league this, this season. They're missing a lot of those uh, with centralization. So... Uh, Faber, the captain of the team, is a leader on and off the ice, and the team's going to look to her to be solid in this game today. Two teams tied in the standings trying to finish their 2017 year strong here this afternoon. It is Buffalo. It is Connecticut. It is your NWHL Twitter Game of the Week coming to you live here from Harbor Center.
just moments away here from starting the game here. Both teams huddling up, ready to go here. Buffalo and Connecticut here on a Saturday afternoon. It is cold. It is hockey weather. It is exactly what everyone who doesn't live in Buffalo expects Buffalo weather to be like <laughs> every single day of December. You're starting goaltenders tonight for Buffalo. No surprise. It is Amanda Levier making her seventh start of the season. Yeah, uh, four goals against uh, .882, but it really doesn't tell the whole tale. You know, she's faced more shots than any other goaltender in the league and has more saves than any other goaltender in the league. So team definitely hangs her out to dry a little bit, but she's there for uh, all of it. No surprise across from her either for Connecticut, making her seventh start of the season is Sid Rossman. Yeah, and another solid goaltender. You know, uh, if uh, anybody were talking about a goalie, maybe uh, going into the season, that would be a weak point for her team. It was Rossman, and she's been the opposite of that. Similar stat line, uh, 3.44 goals against with a .886. Uh, sorry, 3.44 uh, goals per game and a .886 save percentage. But again, you know, just one of the strong points for her team. Just moments away here. Both teams at center rice ready to go. And a big late 2017 contest. And we are underway. The Whale win the opening draw. They'll be going from right to left on your broadcast wearing their visiting white uniforms with green and blue trim. The Buttes in their home powder blues with white and black trim will be skating from left to right. Puck pinballs around inside the Buffalo zone. Backhanded and kept in there by Huertas. But knocked back out to center ice out of the reach of Kunichika all the way back down behind the Connecticut net. Huertas fires it around, comes to the near side point where it's kept in by Casorso. Leaks it across to Burns. Burns fires it back down into the corner. Corin Bowie there. Jess Jones looking back for Bowie. That puck though deflected away. Kunichika trying to follow it up but she's surrounded. Puck pinned to the boards, but taken back by Kunichika. Fires that pass back through the slot. Kept in by Casorso. The long quarter. Kunichika for looking for Bowie. Turned away by Rossman. And you can see the agility of Rossman there. That should have been a goal, but she got that leg down and made the save. Fluke skates it up ahead and dumps it in. And a great early chance, less than a minute in for Buffalo. You talked in the open, Eric, about the importance of players who have been with their teams now for all three seasons, and Courtney Kunichika is that player for Buffalo, and you saw the creativity offensively. Yeah, absolutely, and any of the younger players talk about her as a leader and just a patient presence on the on the ice. Kelly Babstock circling back, takes center ice, and now into the Buffalo zone. Kelly Babstock winds it, fires a shot on to the crest of the jersey of Levier, who will hold on for our first whistle and first face-off here of this contest. Babstock, one of those players here for Connecticut, is going to be looking to get them going offensively here tonight. One of the more recognizable names here in a sea of new players here for the Whale. Yeah, another third-year player leading the team in goals, and that's, that's uh, you know, Burns almost gives a screen to, to Babstock there. You want to make sure that Levier gets to see that shot. Face-off here to Levier's right is one off ahead off the face-off by Barabo, and that one's going to be covered there by Levier taking no chances, so we'll take a second crack at that face-off here. 18.44 still remaining on the first period clock. Barabo in there against Elia. Wins a second face off back. Killenbach turned and fired only as far as Lisa Chess and her back pass up ahead. Deflected and back out to the neutral ice. Played there nicely by Sarah Shuro. Chased after by Rusler. Fought along the half wall. Buffalo's Forge trying to get there. Elia does get a piece of that, but it's out of the zone. Drags it back in there. Skamura jumps back on side. Elia. Back pass banked around. Edney. Turns it, fires it in behind the goal, out of the reach of Shurib, all the way around to the near side board. Elia chasing after that as well. Back to Chesson, fired in behind the Connecticut net, but only Whale players there. Barabo. She'll skate it up ahead to center ice, turns it, tries to fire it in, but it's deflected. Chasing after it now, taking it back for Buffalo is Vin, tried to drag it inside and had it taken away. Did with a lot of ice to work with, but just couldn't beat the Connecticut defender. Jay Stafford there and deflected away. And now back the other way come the whale. Huertas leaves it up ahead for Fluke. Fluke, her pass across, finds a streaking teammate. Dragged inside. Levier got out and challenged that shot coming through from Aid. And taken back the other way now by Buffalo. Deflected and knocked down back at center ice one more time. Bouye chasing after it. Murphy. They jostle along the half wall in behind the Buffalo goal. Ott. Trying to get there at Connecticut's forecheck is all over that pass. They jostle to a side in the corner. Comes back to Bouye, back to the point. That shot fired through traffic and wide. Off the stick of Elena Orlando. Floats in the air, kept in one more time by the whale. Back to Bouye. She winds and fires. That shot sticked away by Levier. 
Shots officially three to one to this point here for the Whale. Here comes Kristen Lewicki. Cuts inside, trying to lead that pass ahead for Jones, who was all sorts of tangled up. And you can see the appeal there from Aid, but the referee's arm is off Buffalo. We're down with the extra skater. Levier back to the bench. Jones up high. Kunichika back across. Shot deflected in front, locked away. Chesson scoops it up and puts it in, but Connecticut had established possession maybe for a second. And the <laughs> whistle blows for the penalty. Established a deflection maybe, but uh, Casorso not happy about getting her first goal of the season taken away there. That was a quick whistle if I've ever seen one. Yeah, you can see Jones dragging it through there and just in a sea of Connecticut defenders. Her stick got held and she got hooked and all sorts of fun things up to the referee, which one of those they want to call. Buffalo, though, set to go to their first power play of the evening. And we'll see how they can work here with the extra skater. And knee shot fire through and that one blockered away by Rossman. Skamura back to the point to Edney. Edney shot through traffic low and patted away by Rossman. Kunachika tried to leave it back in front for Elia, who had gotten bumped out of the play. The whale collected fire right back down the ice there. As that was Beattie who was able to pick that puck up and fire it all the way down as far as Leviet. Her back pass in behind her own goal, taken here by Edney. Back ahead to Elia. Elia across to Kunachika. Kunachika leaves it back for Elia. Elia drags it inside. Beck hit pass in front looking for Vint, but she was tied up. Elia gets it back to Skamura. Skamura thought about it. Pressured out high, leaves it there for Edney. Collected back down low. Elia, Kunichika, pass across to Skamura. Didn't get all of it. Deflected play on the side of the goal by Vint. Goes up over the crossbar. Kunichika back to Edney. Good zone pressure here by Buffalo. Skamura fakes the shot. Switches spots with Edney. Gets it back to her. Edney's shot through is blocked. Lost her stick in the process. It's blocked back out to sent back to neutralize there by Goldsmith. Skamura, her pass deflected down by Fluke in front of the Buffalo bench. Got to be careful there with skaters coming on and off the ice. Good pressure here neutralized now by Babstock for Connecticut. Buffalo can't get reestablished off the change, and Babstock turns and fires it in. Just 34 seconds remaining here on the Buffalo power play. In their first two seasons, Buffalo leaned heavily on their special teams, and they haven't really come through so far this year. I think it's important to, for Buffalo's power play to be effective here tonight. Second unit out here for Buffalo. Here's Kristen Lewicki. Her pass ahead, trying to be deflected by Jones, who got stepped into. And taken back the other way one more time by Babstock. Two on two for the Whale shorthanded. Her pass across just a little bit behind Bouye. Fluken behind the goal, leaves it around for Babstock. Time is winding down here on this Buffalo power play. Just five seconds now, and they're not going to get it out of their zone for Connecticut's back to even strength. Let's take it back the other way. Jess Jones coming in off her first NWHL goal. Turns and fires that in, goes off for a change. Bowie chasing after it. Kunachika in behind the goal, can't find it. The Whale trying to take their time, but it's turned back over. Corin Bowie tried the dragon inside, had it taken away. Casorso's pass on the Bowie deflection on, turned away by Rossman. That was a great play there from Casorso to Bowie. Bowie still dragging it through, leaves it around. Her pass deflected, just creating tons of space there in the offensive zone. The two-time Isabel Cup champion, Corin Bowie. Whale taking it back the other way. Through center ice, it's Barabo. Leaves it for Anderson. Anderson spinning off a check, dumps it in behind the Buffalo goal. Pick up there by Casorso. Tried to get it around to Skamura. Her pass, though, deflected. Read all the way by Beattie. Murphy floats that one in the air, trying to spring Shurub. And that one read all the way, but deflected away here to Skamura. Tried to drag it inside, had it taken away. Roosler all over that defensively there for the Whale. Gillenbach had her pass intercepted. That shot fired through by Ott. I believe it got deflected there by the sliding defender. Left in by Shurub, turning with it at the half wall. Surrounded by Connecticut defenders, though, and taken back the other way by the Whale. Rusler takes center ice and turns and dumps it in. Just over 13 minutes still remaining here in a scoreless first period. Stretch pass back to Shurub, the only Buffalo player in there, surrounded by the Whale defense. And taken back out here to center ice. Here's Kelly Babstock. Jostling with Lisa Chesson there at the blue line. Chesson tries to get it ahead to Lewicki and does. Kristen Lewicki tried to drag it inside, lost the handle. Shroka following up the play, but Vint was about five steps into the Connecticut zone by that point, and it is off sides. Shots three aside here early on, Eric. 
Had good end-to-end -end action. Buffalo's power play, though, not what you hope there for your first effort of the evening. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, Connecticut was able to keep control. And then I think Buffalo's doing a little bit too much of waiting for the puck. They need to be more proactive and be ready to turn with it once the pass comes out. Connecticut intercepts that pass to neutralize. And Huertas' pass up ahead, scooped up here by Burns. Back pass there to Casorso. Off the skates of Shroka, taken right back by the Whale. Bouye leaves it ahead to Fluke. Fluke cuts inside of the slot. Emily Fluke fires. Rebound chance. Second one's earned away by Levier. Jammed into her pad there by Shroka. And the referee's whistle blows. Good job there by Fluke in that line for Connecticut, creating some space for shots and getting that second effort on there as well, forcing Levier to make a couple of quick saves. Yeah, it looked like a broken play at the line, and somehow they were able to get a three on two out of it. Thankfully, Levier was high up on the ice, uh, on top of the blue ice, and able to get the leg out to make the first save and trap that puck. Face off to the left of the Buffalo goal is tied up and won back by Kunichika for the views. Murphy. Spinning with it, her pass ahead, picked up here in center ice by Jess Jones. Jones comes in, patience waiting, fire safe by Rossman. You see just the quick hands and the patience of the shot of Jess Jones there. But Rossman was able to outweigh her. Gets back out to neutralize. Jones leaves it back defensively for Jordan Ott. Intercepted and neutralized by Barabo. Buttes defense forced back on their heels. Pass up ahead now to Kunichika into the Connecticut zone. Leaves it for Bowie. Bowie tried to drag it inside, but it's taken away. Read the whole way by Anderson. Anderson goes around Bowie. And Bowie, the captain, doing a great job getting back there on the back check for the Buttes. He's a true end-to-end -end player, 23 in blue. Skimura, her pass in front looking for Chesson off the bench is intercepted. Chesson and captain at the blue line there by Edney. Elia was looking back across for Skimura, but takes it back. Elia across to Sherm, tries to drag it inside. And read by Rossman, I believe her goalie stick got a piece of it as Sherm tried to drag it back in front to the empty side and could not get around the whale goaltender. Yeah, the Buttes tried to get Rossman going side to side and just a nice play by uh, Elia to get the puck over to Sherm, but Rossman was on it, out on top of the crease and trapped that puck underneath it. The combination of Elia and Skimura both so strong on their sticks, they're creating havoc for the whale defense. They win that offensive zone draw as well. Edney shot through traffic, deflected loose in the crease. It was in the skates of Elia, and she could not find it as it flutters away. Back now to neutralize off the stick of Kelly Babstock. It looked like it was suspended in midair for a second. <laughs> Elia back the other way still for Buffalo. A strong shift here for this line for the Buttes. Elia spinning away, surrounded by defenders as their teammates go off for a change, and the Whale are able to collect and go back out here to neutralize. Turned and fired in by Sam Faber. Levier leaves it back behind her goal here for Casorsa. Casorsa. Her pass up through center ice, taken now by Shroka. Quick two on one for the Buttes. Shroka drags it in. Beck get chance on. I believe it caught off the side of the cage, or maybe a piece of Rossman there. Vint turning in the slot, back to the point. That shot fired through traffic by Burns, and that one blocked down, taken back the other way. It's a foot race. Four players going back the other way. That one flutters on. It looked like the Connecticut Sierra fluke got a little bit tangled up there with Burns getting back. Her shot rolls on to Levier, who will hold on for a whistle. Yeah, and even if she had gotten that step, Casorso was so quick to get back into and, and the play, and I'm 99% sure she would have broken it up. Came yeah, from you can the see the angle there. Casorso was doing a pretty good job getting back there and cutting the angle, who played forward for a couple years here for the view. So yeah. she is no stranger to jumping up into plays. Great skating ability. A big key of the Buffalo defense core here as they look to turn some tough games in a row around here. Bouye shot through, fired, and blocked by Lewicki. Second wake at it. The flex up off the crossbar. That one just went into a sea of players in front. It's kind of knuckleballed up off the crossbar. Levier never saw it. Kunichika picks it back up for Buffalo, tries to bank it around, but is kept in by Anderson. Fires it in behind the Buffalo goal, out of the reach of its intended target, Bouye, and taken back here by the Buttes. Murphy. Her pass ahead deflected up ahead there by Bowie, who goes chasing after it all the way down into the Connecticut end. Orlando. Up ahead to Anderson, her pass out of the region was intended to target, taken back, fresh off the bench by Maddie Elia. Elia, waiting for her teammates, finds Shroka off the, Shurub off the bench. Back to the corner, Chesson, behind the goal, looking around far side, and he jumps up and is able to hold that position there on the half wall. And balls again, back behind the whale goal. One hand on her stick, Barabo trying to win it up ahead, kept in a diving play back to Edney by Elia. Skimura chasing after it. Skimura back behind. Sure, a short side chance goes wide. Elia back down low. 
Skamura off the side of the cage. Killenbach behind her own goal again. Barabo tries to fire it around. Chesson comes back streaking up, able to keep it in. Chesson floats that pass down. The wiki back hitch and shouldered away by Rossman. This great awareness there on that pass by Chesson. Wiki, the freshest player on the ice, turning away from Barabo. Good help there by Barabo, able to win that puck away. Back to the line and finally out off the stick of Anderson, back down to the Buffalo win. Great pressure there by the Buttes, one of their better shifts of the night. They need to get those shots on, though. They had the puck in the zone for too long not to get more shots. Aid back behind her goal, skates it out. Floats that pass up at Connecticut, finally with some open ice in front of them here. Babstock has it taken away. Shroka. All by her lonesome in the blue jerseys there in the Connecticut end has it taken away. Babstock. Pass ahead. Finds its target. That one floating away from favor. And back out to neutral ice. That one bounced on her. She wasn't able to collect it there at the Buffalo Blue Line. Kunichika. Into the corner. Courtney Kunichika. Back pass in front, loose in the slot, but nobody there. Jones able to scoop it up. Looking back down low for Kunichika Red all the way. Sorso punches it back into the corner. Kunichika not able to get all of it. And it's taken back here the other way by Jordan Brickner. Goldsmith fires it in, taken by Casorso. Bowie. Plays it off the boards to herself here, lost it. Able, though, to calmly pick it back up <laughs> and fire it right back into the Connecticut end. All chill from 23. Brickner. Off ahead, finds Fluke. Cut down right there at center ice by Murphy. Elia. Had it taken away by Bouye. They jostle back for it. Now Elia has a second crack at it. Cut off, though, read all the way there by Brickner. The whale pick it right back up. Needy. Her pass ahead, taken by Ott for Buffalo. Jordan off through center ice. Her pass deflected onside to Elia. Maddie, Elia shot fire through, blocked away. Off the glass, that one bouncing away from Skamura. Still kept in, though, by that top line for Buffalo. Brickner in the corner. Back to Beattie. One more time, she looks correct. Back behind her own goal one more time here to Brickner. Pass ahead to Fluke. She collides with Murphy. Connecticut's still not able to get it out. And finally, a pass just out of the reach of Ott. Knocked back out for a second by Huertas. Turned right back in by Buffalo as they get a change. Huertas. Up ahead, kept in here by Shroka. Looking back for Lewicki, but the pass a little bit behind her. Taken back by Killenbach. Lewicki. Back to Chesson. Chesson fires through, deflected in the slot and wide of goal. Whale have not been able to get out now, but a bounce pass up ahead to Anderson. One on one, Anderson. Looking to create some space, waiting for her teammates. Gets it back to the point, and that went away off the stick of eight. Turn and fired in by Vint. Just over five minutes remaining here in a scoreless opening period here from Buffalo. Courtney Kunichika can't drag it around. Taken there by Killenbach. Back ahead to Anderson. All Connecticut can do there is dump it in, but it's taken back on the interception. A bad stretch pass there by the Buttes. Connecticut's been a while here since they were able to set up in the Buffalo zone. Kelly Babstock looking to do so now. Babstock turning with it. Leaves it back. Shot through, deflected away by Burns into the corner. Babstock back to pick it up. Kelly Babstock. Her back pass in front, deflected away, looking for Goldsmith into the corner. Faber there as well for the Whale, and this line has just not been able to find some space to work here tonight. Gasorso chips it around and goes chasing after it. Off the glass, but pinned in. Kunichika there as well, around her fallen teammate. To a side that battle for it, kept in here by the Whale. Goldsmith knocks it loose. That one fired through by Babstock, turned away by Levier. Faber. Back to Goldsmith, her pass in front, looking back for Babstock, intercepted, taken by Burns, and she's just going to take this one, fire it off the glass, 
and at least for a second clear the pressure she's iced the puck with 406 remaining here in this first period it's been a long time since we had a whistle eric a it's lot of end-to-end nice. -end action here for these two teams not a lot between them so far yeah no and i think buffalo has really been controlling the play for the most part right up until that last uh, series in their zone where they had to ice the puck but uh, you know, we get the shot coming from Anderson, a nice blocker saved by Levier, and then it's just chaos from there until uh, Jordan Burns ices that puck. Shot off the side of the cage, came loose into the slot, off the stick of Emily Fluke, and knocked back out to neutral ice. Looks like it hit off the side of the net, maybe caught off the back of Levier's pad and kind of floated out underneath it. They don't get a little more pressure going here. Brickner lost her footing, able to win it up ahead, though, to Huertas. Drags it inside back to Fluke. Fluke back to Brickner. Brickner shot through, blocked away by Elia. Elia off the glass up ahead. Able to get it out of her own zone. Fluke waiting and did not wait quite long enough. It was waiting for Huertas to get back on side, but just touched the puck before she was able to tag up to that line. That's just fine. Corinne Bowie had been on the ice for a very long time. Now she gets a chance to rest those legs and maybe has one or two more shifts left in her before the end of this period. If you've ever played hockey, you know that feeling of trying to lift your legs over the boards after being stuck out there for three or four minutes, and it is not pleasant, although sitting down at the end of it feels great. Bruce That's across to Babstock. That one fired high off the glass. Faber. Her pass back in front. Kept in, fired through by Rusler, and that one goes wide. Out of the reach of Rachel Aid, all the way back down into the Connecticut end. Faber collects in front of her own bench. Her back pass deflected away. Fought for in front of the penalty bench as Goldsmith has it taken away by Sherrod. Rusler chasing back after it. Bank pass ahead here to Kelly Babstock. Under three minutes remain here in this first period. Sarah Edney in behind her own goal. Bank pass ahead now, taken and tipped by Shroka. Taken right away from her, though, by Jordan Brickner. Vint back to Shroka. Shroka drags it through. That one blockered away by Rossman. Vint. For pass of the slot, red all the way there by Huertas. Leaves it back there for Bouye. Luke trying to go around the wiki. No such luck as the wiki plays it back off the glass behind her own goal to the near side half wall. Contested there. Brickner trying to win it back ahead to Fluke. Back pass in behind the Buffalo goal. Bouye chasing after. She gets there first. Waiting for something to open up. That one jammed off the side of the goal. I believe caught a piece of the pad of Levier there. Who's going to pounce on that one there for a faceoff, taking no chances with a minute 54 remaining here in this opening period. Yeah, it's a good thing Levier was sharp there as the puck makes its way out to the front off of it. Sounded like her stick. And she's able to, to, like you said, pounce on it, get the freeze. And uh, with just under two minutes left in this period, still have not been able to rain teddy bears onto this ice. Jeff. It is the teddy bear toss here tonight. When Buffalo scores their first goal, you will see a slew of teddy bears, including a couple here from yours truly in broadcast position, uh, headed down towards the ice. Fought for at center ice, taken back here by Buffalo. Jones floats it in here to the Connecticut end. Orlando chasing after it. Her pass red well there by Kunishika, taken back here by the Buttes. Burns shot through traffic, blocked away by Baraba. Buffalo able to get the pressure on. Red well there by Jones, tries to drag it inside and does. Her shot there off the side of the cage and wide. Burns through traffic, her shot blocked away again. Whale looking to spring a play down the other way. Babstock's got a one on one with Casorso. Babstock trying to go wide, create some room, able to create enough time here for her teammates to join her on this rush. Kelly Babstock, great patience. Back to the point, taken here now by Brickner. Brickner winds in, fires her shot through, blocked away by a sliding effort of Courtney Kunichika. Fought for on the near side half wall. Casorso tries to win it back behind her goal there. Jordan Burns chasing after it. That one out of the reach of Skimura. Icing waved off there on the far side. Referee saying it deflected off one of the players there at the blue line. A big break for Buffalo as they'll go off for a change. Sherrod tried to go around on the half wall there, but Rusler read it all the way ahead to Huertas. Huertas tried to streak back in and get it back. A great defensive play there by Jordan Ott, preventing a good chance in the slot there for Huertas. Murphy 
16 seconds remaining here in this opening period. Buffalo looking for one more rush. Elia goes around, takes a bump, keeping possession. Seven seconds. That pass through the slot there to Murphy taken away. One last whack here. Murphy turning around, trying to fire it towards the net. Blocked away in front by the defender, Bouye. And with that, we have reached the end of our first period. We remain scoreless between Buffalo and Connecticut. Shots 12 to 8 for Buffalo in a pretty open period. Not a lot of whistles, not a lot of stoppages. Both teams just going end to end, trying to create something. But so far, these teams have been very, very even. Yeah, and as we said earlier, uh, you know, Buffalo kind of control play. Emily Fluke on screen right now. She's had a really great period, and, and for the Buttes, I would say Maddie Elia is having herself a game, as they say. And we talk about Elia and Skimura, that combination, the two of them out there, very strong in their sticks, maintaining a lot of zone time and possession here for Buffalo. But so far, it's been the goaltenders, it's been the defense. Not a lot of A-plus scoring chances. I think the best chance came in the first 30 seconds for Buffalo when they just missed connecting on their opening shift. And since then, Connecticut's defense has really turned it around here and been able to keep Buffalo very much to the outside. Yeah, we talked about these two goaltenders. I think it's really no surprise that they're the highlight of the game so far. But, uh, you know, just a really good, solid period from both teams. So just about 15 minutes until the second period drops here. Eric, Buffalo has come in here to today with very strong first period. So far today, not as strong of a first period score-wise. What do you think the difference has been here for Buffalo as their offense has struggled? I know there's been a lot of different line combinations this season. Is there missed passes? Is just Connecticut's defense playing well? Yeah, I mean, we saw a little bit of it at the beginning of the game. The lines aren't necessarily uh, used to playing with each other. These are our new set again here tonight. And uh, the other thing is that Buffalo's trying different looks. I, they're, they're working on plays that we haven't seen from them so far this season. They must be seeing something from Connecticut that they're trying to take advantage of. Before the game, we talked about Connecticut's difficulties handling the rush. So far here today, Buffalo really hasn't been able to get them caught in handling anything. We're going to throw it down to ice level here. Justin Eric is our third member of our broadcast crew. Hello, I'm here with uh, whale forward Joanne Barabo. Now, Joanne, probably not the start of the season your team was looking for. What kind of things are being focused on in practice to try and correct that? Uh, we're working a lot of our, on our execution. I think that's what we're lacking a little bit of right now. Uh, we had a good start this week, too, with, what, with our two practices, making sure we execute our breakout, our forward check, as the coach um, wants us to do it so we can be successful. Now, Taylor Kersey, the Buffalo Butte City goal scorer, very small, quick forward. Is she somebody that is game planned individually, or do you game plan to stop them as a, t as a, as a team in a whole? Um, our game plan is really just to focus on herself right now. Uh, we have a lot of things, like I said, that we need to work on. And then as we focus on our breakouts and our diesel and our forecheck, that things just are going to take care of themselves on their own. So. Thanks, Joanne. Have a good one. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Bet you guys. And thanks to Justin, the third member of our broadcast team, and by far the best suit in the building here today, bringing some little early Christmas spirit to all of us here. No argument for me. As we wish you an early happy holidays. Here, our last time that we'll be with you until the 2018 uh, calendar year has arrived here for us. It's a very even first period, Eric. Hard to draw a lot here between these two teams in terms of how they've been different here so far. Statistically, Buffalo had a few more shots, but they weren't A-plus quality shots, really. Connecticut's defense, that was very much maligned, getting beaten down the ice. We showed those highlights before the game there by Boston time and time again last week. have really come to play here today. Um, what is Buffalo going to have to do here offensively to try to create some more space here? It looks like they've been really shut down in terms of the speed game. Yeah, and I really think that they have to try to create those chances on the rush. It's really how they score uh, in, in previous games is they're able to get the puck out in front, um, create some traffic and then bury it from there. And I, that, if that's your bread and butter, then you, that's what you have to focus on. And for Buffalo defensively so far here, and for Connecticut's offense as well here, they have not been able to get a lot of sustained zone time, but when they have, it looks like a lot of pucks have been loose in the slot, loose in the crease. Pucks are just getting away from the Buffalo defenders, getting away for seconds from Levier. What's going to be key for Connecticut here as they try to pounce on those chances here, being the road team here early on? Buffalo will definitely chase the puck, so if they can maintain possession for a little while and even just get a couple of shots on, and you know, um, the Riveters are very good at scoring on the backdoor play. They'll get the puck high in the slot, and that, that woman is always open on the back door. And it's something that Buffalo really kind of fails to pay attention to. Uh, Connecticut can definitely score on a couple of those tonight. 
And now the one power play chance here for Buffalo tonight, they weren't able to get a lot of sustained zone time. You had mentioned, and it was very much to the first two seasons, Buffalo's power play was a big catalyst here for their offense, and they weren't able to get that going on the first chance. Uh, some different combinations here tonight with some players being jostled around the lineup a little bit for lines. What's going to be key for special teams, you think, for Buffalo here tonight if they're going to get that going? Well, I mean, they just, uh, like we've been saying for, I don't know, six games now, they, they have to generate shots. They, they were able to maintain, uh, maintain possession in the Connecticut zone uh, pretty well in that first period, but they still only 12 shots and they, they really had extended time. They, it's, they're playing it around the perimeter. They need to get it down deep and get the shots on goal. Now, I'm just curious, you know, both, both being Buffalo natives here, when I drive up here today and it's snowing outside and I can't even see across the street yesterday, this is the most stereotypical Buffalo day of all time in terms of, like, if you don't live in Buffalo, you think it's just like a gigantic whiteout all the time. <laughs> and usually you're not right. Uh, today is the perfect day for hockey weather. I don't, doesn't it feel like this is the perfect sport, the perfect day to be here, though, at least when you're inside and not getting snowed on? Yeah, absolutely. But outside, too, I know they've got a couple of outdoor rinks in the area, and I'm sure everybody's taking full advantage of that. If they okay. Snow, the Trans Siberian Orchestra is across the street. They've got Santa down at Canal Side. It is a beautiful day for hockey here in Buffalo. These two teams here on your Twitter game of the week trying to find something between them here. And really, so far through the first 20 minutes, very even back and forth game here between the Buttes and the Whale. We'll see here as we go towards the second period what either of these teams can really do to open it up here. A very clean game, too. Uh, the last time we were here with you on the Twitter game of the week, the Buttes and the Riveters played what is the most penalty laden game here of all time, as far as I can remember. We got some stats coming up here for you. First period stats here. Uh, Buffalo and Connecticut getting tied at zero shots. 12 to 8 for Buffalo. Only the one penalty to Connecticut. Buffalo 0 for 1 on the power play here. Faceoffs very even here as well. And again, as you look farther and farther down the stats, it gets harder and harder to find something that really pulls these teams apart from each other here today. Yeah, and I think that's something that we could expect uh, is a little bit more parity in this third season. And there definitely is that. You know, we have two teams that are 2 and 3, one team that's 2, 2 and 1. You know what I mean? Uh, it, and obviously the Riveters are just tearing everybody apart as it stands, but uh, we're seeing a lot more evenness among the teams and, and in the stats today. So from a coaching perspective, your coach is Celia Mooney for Buffalo, or you're on the Connecticut side of things as well here. These are two teams that with a win here today could find themselves in second place, depending on how tonight's game between the Riveters and the Pride goes. With a loss, you're likely to find yourselves, actually you will find yourselves in fourth place. How big of a difference is that mentally to be in second place and be in fourth place? I know you're still chasing the Riveters either way at this point, but second place and being on the upper half of the standings got to be a much better feeling, I would think, here. Yeah, well, I mean, the second seed gets the third seed, and, and like we said, there's a lot of parity, so it might not make that big of a difference this year, but you stated mentally, uh, two, between two and three, the runner-up and the runner-runner-up, uh, it's a big deal. And th these are teams that are moving towards the All-Star game, moving towards that recently announced NWHL versus Team USA game, which will be very exciting. We'll have more details on here for you later as well. See the fans here cheering on some of our younger players who have joined us on the ice for an intermission shootout. We're going to take a quick break here, guys, and be back here with you with second period action. You're watching Buffalo and Connecticut on the NWHL Twitter Game of the Week. Just about a minute away here from second period action here at Harbor Center. Scoreless for 20 minutes of play between the Buffalo Buttes and the Connecticut Whale. About as even of a first period as you could have possibly imagined in almost all statistical categories. But one of these teams there is going to be kind of bound to break through at some point here. What do you think is going to separate these two teams here today? Yeah, well, the story so far has definitely been the goaltending. 20 shots in that first period, and both Rosman and Levier have been hot to start the game. It seemed like teams are trying to get them going laterally, and that's not how you score on these goalies. you got to make a mess in front of the net. I think Connecticut's done a little bit better job of doing that so far. Um, that's, that Buffalo is going to have to capitalize on those chances. Now, Buffalo has not been strong in the third period yet this season. They've really been beaten down by everyone they played in the third period. So, do you think that second period is kind of, think it's kind of looming in their mind here as they get going here for period number two? Well, I mean, you know, un knowing that the third period is their weakest, they're going to have to dominate and, and get at least two goals here and, and take that real strong lead going into that, that third period where they haven't been so great, even at home so far this year. So, Levy and Rossman will switch ends here. Buffalo in their home powder blue uniforms will be skating now from right to left here on your broadcast feed. And the Whale in their visiting white uniforms with blue and green trim will be skating from left to right. Both teams are back out on the ice here. We are just moments away now from second period action here at the Harbor Center. Jeff Boyd and Eric Walschlager, Justin Eric, our third man between the benches and in the intermissions, all that fun stuff as well. I'm bringing you some holiday cheer with his Don Cherry-esque suit. <laughs> You can't see Eric's tie right now, but he's got an awesome reindeer tie. We'll have to show you in a second. It is festive. It, it very does festive. play jingle bells. I feel bad that I was not as festive as you guys here today. <laughs> the uh, gigantic whiteout blizzard by my house yesterday kind of prevented me from doing any extra shopping. Not in Buffalo. Not never. We are underway here in the second period. Face-off tied up right at center ice and one back by the Buttes. Casorso. 
Patiently waiting, spinning back in front of her own goal, waiting for something to open up. Up far side to Bowie, but her pass deflected by Huertas. Knocked down at center ice. Bouye falling, able to knock it back ahead. Burns chasing after it. With Emily Fluke hot on her tail. Casorso's pass ahead, intercepted, deflected, and wide of Leviet. Burns pass ahead, looking and not quite able to find Jones, but Puck still deflects down here to the Connecticut end. Brickner turning with it. Pass ahead, deflected, taken back by Burns. Kicks off a skate. Back to Bowie, who has it taken right back away there by Goldsmith. Dump and chase here in behind the Buffalo goal. Levier leaves it around out of the reach though of Casorso and lost her goal stick in the process. Goldsmith, pass around to Bouye. Her shot blocked away by Bowie. Babstock in behind the Buffalo goal. Comes around here, loose. It's gonna go just out of the reach of that goal stick from Levier. This is laying in the corner. Rusler's shot through traffic, deflected wide by Faber. Faber tries to pick it back up, leaves it there. Spinning in the slot, looking to turn around with it is Babstock. Back pass down low again to Faber. Good sustained zone time here for the Whale. Goldsmith able to win it back to Roosler. Back down low to Faber. Levia did just get her goal stick back. There's another stick down on the ice. We got a one stick quota on this shift. Babstock back to Roosler, shot through traffic, deflected, and goes just wide. I believe it was played with a high stick. Player touched it first, high stick waved off. Jam play on the side of the goal. Second whack at it by Barabo. Both turned away by Levier. Bruce Tries to drag it inside, surrounded by blue jerseys. Casorso fires it up the wall, but kept in again here by Anderson. Anderson back across. That one fires her floated just wide there by Savage. Second whack at it. Excuse me, that was Rachel Aid. Seven, not 27. Shot through traffic. Then we have a puck. Deflect up and out of play for a whistle. Souvenir for a fan. Quick souvenir for one of our fans there. Here you can see on the far side here today. Two minutes of period have gone here, 2.15 to be exact here. It's been almost all Connecticut here out of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Buffalo finally just got off on that first change, and you could tell toward the end of that shift that they were going to tire. Face off here to Levier's right. One back by Lewicki. Chesson chasing after it. There's a play it around. It's deflected, though, kept into the corner there by Fluke. Fluke and Chesson jostle. Still going for it here. Lewicki trying to win it around. Pinched down and kept in here by Brickner. Brickner down low to Fluke. Fluke back up high. Knocked down, kept in, pass across, skated through and fired on, deflected into the slot. Fluke couldn't find the handle on it. That, pay, that point shot came through there from Beattie. And lay dangerously in the slot for a moment. Off the top of the glove here. To Bouye, her pass through the slot, but no one on the back door there for the whale. Buffalo struggling here to get out of their own end. Lewicki wins the puck around here, finally losing the skates of Rebecca Vinch. She'll pitchfork it up into the air. It floats down. Brickner trying to quickly turn it back and does here to Bouye, all by herself, waiting for her teammates to join her. Leaves that pass there. Faber cuts inside. Sam Faber in the slot, trying to play it in front, and that one left just wide on the near side. Elia, all ahead, taken by Shroka, able to get it out of the zone. Pass ahead, deflected at the blue line, taken here by Elia, who was a step ahead of the play at the Connecticut blue line, and it is offsides. And we got Connecticut really here. dominating early on here is a chance, Eric, for Sam Faber. Yeah, Faber brings that puck to the net and just can't get it right around Levier, and thankfully the backdoor player was seated on the ice and unable to capitalize on that free puck. Yeah, was able to outweigh Levier, but wasn't quite able to outweigh both defenders there. Connecticut, through the first three and a half minutes of the second period, have been dominating time of possession and chances here. Buffalo looking to respond here with the combination of Elia, Skamura, and Shura, their best line so far tonight, back out here on the ice. Barabo, up to Killenbach, knocked back in by Ott, in behind the whale goal. Skamura chasing after it, Elia picks it up. Back in behind her own goal there by Orlando, back to Barabo. Stretch pass deflected, intercepted by Ott, waiting for her teammates to get back on side. Scoops it in, goes chasing after it, but she's caught off there and taken back by Barabo. Deflects away. Shura to Jones. Jones can't get around, and it's taken back now the other way by Casey Anderson. 
It's a bump from Jones. Referee's arm goes up on that. Connecticut looks like they're set to go to their first power play of the night. Anderson plays it back into the corner. Kunichika will touch up, and there's that whistle. And Jess Jones will take the penalty there. Sit for two or less. 15-36 yeah. to go being period. It's probably so. a, a light body checking call. Uh, Jones 50-50 play along the boards, and there, there was some contact there. But uh, you know she gets. Here's the penalty. You can see uh, both both players going for the puck, and Jones just gets the inside track and kind of gives her an uh, extra little shove that uh, sets her down to the ice, and that's the penalty that gets called. But uh, the reason the puck comes back the other way is Jones got trapped up high with nobody to give that puck to. She had to hold on to it and lost the handle. So first power play of the night here for the Whale. And they'll set up Roosler. Near side pass taken there by Orlando back to Roosler. Shot blocked down there by Shroka back out to neutral ice. And a great job up top there on the penalty kill there for Buffalo. Goldsmith can't find the handle. Lewicki back to Shroka trying to get around and can't. It's kept in there by Babstock. Back up high shot. Fire through traffic. Loved away by Levy. Off that shot from Goldsmith. Babstock circling, patiently waiting. Back to Bouye. Pass the slot, looking back for Bouye, is intercepted by Lewicki. Lewicki trying to go around, and Roosler able to hold the line there. Lewicki with an incredible amount of speed. If she was able to get to that open space, it would have been interesting to see how that rush would have gone there yeah, shorthanded. A half inch uh, further through the legs, and she was gone. Favor in behind the Buffalo goal. Flex around, taken there by Bouye. Bouye back up high. Comes around here, Brickner. Shot through traffic, deflected away into the corner by Casorsa. Faber picks it back up. Bouye, back to Faber. Pass back up high, comes around to Brickner, deflected by Skamara, back to Faber. Rachel Aid shot through traffic into the crest of the jersey of Levier, who holds on with no deflection for a whistle. Connecticut doing a good job still here with the power play. Maybe not creating as many chances as they would hope to, but maintaining zone possession. Yeah, I mean, uh, five shots so far in the period, and we see the that last play here where the puck comes to the point and then gets back across. Thankfully, Skimura is able to clog up that, that passing lane. In behind the Buffalo goal off that one face-off defensively. That one hops away from Brickner, but able to be kept in here by Barabo. Brickner turns and fires it back behind the Buffalo goal. Quickly, six minutes have already gone by here in the second period. Still scoreless here in Buffalo here this afternoon. Whale looking to get one last good possession shift here with 13 seconds remaining on this power play. Rachel A switches spots there with Brickner and gets it back to her. Brickner waiting. Bank pass down to Fluke. Back to Brickner. Brickner thought about it. Gets it back on that far wall shot. Deflected through, padded away by Levier as Buffalo is back to full strength. Hot pass ahead here to Skimura. Skimura bank pass ahead looking to spring Jess Jones. And a good job defensively getting back. But numbers the other way here for Buffalo. Jess Jones picks it up. Backhand pass in front. Trying to float it through to Vint. And deflected and ultimately punched away there by Rossman. Rossman was lucky on that one. The uh, defenseman <laughs> deflected it straight back into the, into the net almost. Puck knocked away from Goldsmith back here. Rachel Laid. Far side back to Brickner. And now with the full head of steam back the other way is Kelly Babstock. Babstock all the way down below the Buffalo goal line. Back to the point to Roosler. Her shot blocked away by Elia. Goldsmith back up high. Babstock shot blocked away again, this time by Bowie. Back out to neutral ice. Elia hot on the trail of Orlando, takes it away. Maddie Elia works it inside. Patience behind the goal, waiting for something to open up as she works it up here. Back to the near side point. Her pass deflected, but kept in here by Edney. Shot through traffic, blocked away. Loose in the slot. Elia punches it up in the air. Loves it down, trying to find something to do with it, but it's knocked away from her there by Orlando, forcing her to chase back after it. Picks it back up. Maddie Elia. Leaves it there on that far side wall, turning with it. Bowie leaves it back from Murphy. Shot through traffic, knocked away by Rossman. Knocks it out of the air with her goalie stick back into her catching glove as that rebound did not pounce away from her. She was on it from the word go and holds on for a faceoff. You see the strength of Elia there, who waiting for the puck to come out of the air with her glove raised, fought off two Connecticut defenders and uh, did not end up on the ice. Faceoff here to the left of the whale goal. Both teams go and get a change here. Buffalo wins the offensive zone draw. Sarah Casorso gets pressure there. Great play by Megan Huertas. And she's back the other way, one on one. Huertas drags it around Burns. One hand on a six. Side, short side chance turned away by Levier. And a great end to end play there for Connecticut's number 43, just creating her own chances. Yeah, that stretch pass is something that Connecticut's been focusing on all game and hasn't been able to connect yet, but 
Buffalo needs to be ready for that. Casorso back to Burns, looking for Stroka, but taken away. Anderson chasing after it. Leaves it there for Fluke. Fluke's bank pass back to the point player off the bench, just able to hold it in. Bouye. Her pass through deflected, but picks it back up. Bouye waiting for it. Tried to get it back across, deflected again by Casorso. Orlando shot is blocked. Anderson fighting through, able to maintain zone possession there. Great kick play. Fluke. Back to the point. Orlando lines and fires. Her shot through, deflected, second whack at it. It's under Levier. Almost leaked through. Referee waves it off immediately as it's pinned back to Levier's pad there by Burns. Not how you draw it up, maybe, if you're Amanda Levier, but able to cover up and hold on for a faceoff. Yeah, and uh, there were two Connecticut whale down there chopping, trying to uh, knock down the trees that were Levier's uh, legs. You see the shot come down from the point, and out in front, there are no, three. It ends up being three whale and no Buttes players. That's something that Buffalo needs to be paying attention to. Face off here to Levier's right, one back here by the Buttes. Up ahead here to Jess Jones. Her bank pass ahead taken by Kunichika. Plays it around here far side, but just unable to be handled cleanly by Bowie. Followed up though by Kunichika. Back to Edney. Her shot blocked away. Jess Jones in the slot with room to work with. She shoots and scores. Jess Jones. It's her second in as many games. I just threw a teddy bear into the Buffalo penalty box <laughs> in celebration. It is one to nothing Buffalo as they are showered here today. And we see these gifts uh, for the Gold Star families coming down on the ice. What a great play by the Buttes. Finally able to get some possession and Jess Jones sees that corner, waits for the defender to come across, maybe catches Ruzler a little bit and Buffalo is on the board one nothing. This is what they said, we said they needed to do. It only took half a period for them to get some possession and get some shots on goal. It was a little bit of a broken play at the Buffalo Blue line. The stretch pass ahead by Kunichika to Bowie. She couldn't quite get the handle on it. But eventually, Puck comes back around. It gets fired through. And then Jess Jones waiting here in the near side slot gets gifted a golden opportunity. And if he gives Jess Jones that kind of room to shoot, she is not going to make a mistake. And she buries it behind Rossman. Really not a lot that the Connecticut goalie could have done about it. Yeah, and I, I think that Jones, this is the kind of thing that we're used to seeing from Jones in her time with the CWHL. Ended up being the tied for the leading scorer with Marie Philippe Poulin last season and that's why she came to Buffalo that's why Sealing and Muni brought her here and maybe it just took her took her a little bit to uh, get used and you can see her there and just beautiful patience and we talk about the quickness of her hands they're just waiting out the defender finding that shooting lane it almost uses the sliding defender there as a bit of a screen yeah and, and like you said the patience and we see we saw the strong hands earlier in the first period when she had that drag move down low and it was just ridiculous almost like it was on a string so uh, this, I, we're going to see a lot more of this from Jess Jones in the future, I think. So the stoppage in play, as uh, Eric mentioned there, we mentioned in a little bit in the first period, it's the teddy bear toss here today in Buffalo. Uh, when they scored their first goal, a bunch of teddy bears or other stuffed animals getting thrown down onto the ice here, going to Gold Star Families, a tradition that Buffalo started here a couple of years ago when they came into the league that they've continued here um, in terms of supporting that charity. Yeah, a lot of fun and a lot of fans in the stands here, so hopefully a lot of gifts for Gold Star Families in this holiday season. So we'll reset here. 11.02 remains here in the second period, and we have finally got our first goal. It is Jess Jones. It's her second of the season. Buffalo leads one to nothing. Lisa Chesson right off that faceoff. Chesson drags it through. Back in front looking for Jones again, and that one just out of her reach, and she had some room to work with in front. Bouye back the other way for the whale. Leaves it there for Fluke. Back to Rusler. The pass across kicked away. Knocked away but from Beattie and taken back here by Jess Jones. You can almost feel the confidence in 32 in blue. Jones gets it back. Jones across backdoor play to Bowie and just missed. And if that puck lands on Bowie's stick, it's 2-0. This line is firing on all cylinders now. Three very good hockey players, and they're just feeling it, as you said. Another great back-checking play. Jones back to Lewicki, leaves it there for off. Shot turned away, rebound chance for Lewicki. She scores. And they are just swarming Connecticut now. Everything could be going right for Buffalo is. And speaking of second of the year, it's Kristen Lewicki who makes no mistake on the rebound. And just like that, it's 2 nothing Buttes. And this is what we talked about earlier on. They need to get the shots on, and they need to be there to collect the rebounds. And here we see Ott takes the shot, and all she does is make Rosman make a, a leg pad save. There's three Buttes behind it following up, and Kristen Lewicki gets her second of the season, burying in the back of the net. Right off the faceoff, it was Chesson looking for Jones, then it was Jones and Bowie, and now it's Jones again creating, and this time leads to a goal. It'll be Lewicki second in as many games, her second of the season, and a Buffalo team that spent the first seven minutes of this period 
pinned in their own end and killing penalties on top of that have suddenly found everything offensively to the tune of a quick two to nothing lead. Goals less than a minute apart here. This building is a hopping. We can feel the energy in the building here. The fans were just waiting for that first goal to go through. Whale looking to answer. Barabo trying to split the D. Her shot fired up over the crossbar. Picked back up there by Jordan Notch. She'll pick up that primary assist there on the Wiki's goal. Murphy. Back up here. That one kicked away off the skates of Vinci. Not able to handle it. Babstock can't get away from Ott. Leaves it back for Murphy. Taken away. That shot deflected up over the crossbar. Off the stick of Goldsmith. Shroka back out here to the neutral line. So all the way back down to the Connecticut end. Rachel Aid. Pass ahead to Faber. Far side to Goldsmith. Collides hard with Murphy there at the blue line. Murphy's stick went flying about two zones. Goldsmith into the corner, chasing after it. Joss is there with Elia. Ott there as well. Whale come free with the puck, looking in front for a fluke, but deflected away from her and couldn't quite be held in there by Rusla as we're back out to neutralize. She'll turn and fire it in, delay it offside as the Whale get all back onside. Buffalo able to recollect the puck here in behind their own goal. Jordan Ott. Up ahead here to Skimura. Far side pass taken here by Elia. Elia floats it up ahead. That one flutters down behind the kinetic goal. Chased after here by Shurip. Back up high, Casorso. Patiently waiting, trying to switch spots with Skimura. That one almost intercepted by Flute, but does get it through to Skimura, at least for a second, before the Whale pick it back the other way. Bouye trying to bank it back to Flute. That one intercepted, but followed up here by Bouye. Amanda Bouye can't quite take it away. Skimura follows it up. For neutralize here to Shura. Shura patiently waiting, fires that one on, and kicked away by Rossman. Brickner off the glass, up ahead to Huertas. Huertas, bank pass here to Bouye. Quick two on one here for the Whale. Huertas, and red and perfectly played there by Jordan Burns. Casorso had it taken away by Fluke. Fluke waiting, trying to get that pass back up high and does here to Orlando. Winds and fires through traffic, blocked away. Shura back to Skimura. Able to drag it out here to neutral ice. Taken back by Casey Anderson. Casorso now for Buffalo in behind her own goal. Taken there by Killenbach. Killenbach deflects in the slot. Knocked away into the corner. Well, Darn to get some pressure going here. Jones. Can't quite win it away there. Anderson now for Connecticut behind their own goal. Off the back of the Buffalo goal and taken back here one more time by Jess Jones, who has been absolutely everywhere in the last five minutes here for the Buttes. One away from her, though, by Barabo. Barabo working some room in the slot there. Gloved down by Casorso. Loose in front. That one almost pinballing away there from Amanda Levier, but she will hold on here for a whistle. 7 12 remaining here in the second period. Buffalo on the strength of back to back quick goals here have a 2 to nothing lead. And they've evened up, evened up the shots at 18 now, so this end to end action is paying off, and they are getting more shots on goal, both teams so far. Face off one there by the whale, deflected away into the near side corner. Great aggressive play there by Rebecca Vint, wins it away here for the Buttes. Up ahead to Shroka, leaves it for Chesson. That shot fired wide, back chance there from Vint up over the crossbar. Sam Faber, stretch pass looking for Babstock. One on one down there with Edney Whale able to follow up Goldsmith. Back to Babstock. Her shot deflected and leaks through the crease and wide. Goldsmith turns it back behind the Buffalo goal. The Wiki fires it up high. Beattie able to keep it in. Taken right back though by the second of the two Buffalo goal stars. Kristen Lewicki. Lewicki draws a penalty. Still able to go up at Lewicki. Fires up over the crossbar. Delayed penalty coming up here to the Whale. Chesson. Down low to Edney, shot through traffic, padded away by Rossman. Russo will touch up. And we talked in the open here today, Eric, about the speed of Kristen Lewicki. She just got hooked on a rush and still beat everyone down the ice here to create that chance and send Buffalo to their second power play of the evening. You saw the hook there on that replay as she got clean around Beattie, who lost her footing. Yeah, and uh, just, you know, leaves two Connecticut players in the dust on a free break break to the net. And unfortunately, neither will put the puck in the back, but, you know, gained, gained some possession and uh, Buffalo got a little bit... Uh, couple more shots on. With 6.19 remaining here in the second period, Buffalo will go to their second power play of the night. They're 0 for 1. Colleen Murphy off that one draw there for the Buttes, looking to set up here. And that pass back from Loki away from his intended target, the source, so they put it out of their own zone, which is one thing you really can't afford to do here if you're trying to put the pressure on early on there on that power play. 
Another one pops away from Lewicki, taken back here by Barabo. Barabo looking in front for Goldsmith. That one deflected away off the, skate, the stick of Murphy, right back to Levier. So a rather ominous beginning to this second Buffalo power play. 20 less, seconds in. Less than ideal, if uh, you could classify it. So they'll set up now in their own defensive end here with the extra skater. 5.57 still remains here in the second period. Buffalo on the strength of goals from Jones and Lewicki, who were also the goal scorers against the Riveters last week. Lead a 2 to nothing. Vint back the other way with a little bit of open ice to work with here. Rebecca Vint. Thought better of the shot. It will circle back. Leaves it back there to the point. Edney. Near side to Elia. Back to Edney. Juggling caught there by Skimura. Back to Elia. Her shot blocked away. That one had to sting Brickner, but he's able to knock it down and back in it out of the zone. Edney back into her own end. Turning away from the four-checking player. He plays it ahead here, which skated up here by Maddie Elia. Elia tried to drag him inside, had it taken away, though, by Rusler. Kunichika follows it up there as well. 50 seconds rain here on the second Buffalo power play. Kunichika back up high. Colleen Murphy. Stop fires through. That one loose in the slot. And the skates of Elia. A bunch of players all tied up. No one can find it. Murphy follows it up. Murphy spinning away on the half wall. Trying to get away from Brickner. Elia. In by the Connecticut goal. Leaves it there for Murphy. And Murphy tried to leave it back for Casorso, who couldn't quite get there. And in behind the play, some jostling going on between Elia and Bouye. And neither of them have been called for any of that, which is quite something. In behind the Connecticut goal, Whale able to clear it back one more time here. Buffalo running out of time here with a power play advantage. Now just two seconds and one. Standing at the bench and rejoining the action is Kelly Babstock. Stretch pass deflected in by Jones just wide of the Connecticut goal, and Rossman going to have none of that. She'll pounce on that one. Hold on here for a faceoff. And we just mentioned a moment ago here the jostling behind the play, and you see it coming up here on the screen. Elia didn't like a shot in behind the play that she did from Bouye. Knocked her stick away. They went down a couple times to the ice, all tangled up, taking some shots at each other here. He was getting a little bit feisty there on that power play. Yeah, he is getting uh, some some rough rides uh, down low. She was getting a stick to the to the spine, uh, uh, standing in front, trying to wait for a deflection too. So uh, you, she's easy to rile up, and I, I think she's gotten there. Vint leaves that one up ahead here for Shroka, joining the rush. Kaylin Shroka tried to play that one on her backhand back in front, but it's deflected away in behind the whale goal. Elena Orlando on her backhand around here near side. Faber chasing after it, but beat there by Burns, able to keep it in for Buffalo. Rebecca Vint. Can't quite take it away, but the Buttes able to hold on here. Great follow up there by Shroka. Jordan Burns in behind the goal. Vint away from her and the Whale looking to turn it back here. Stretch pass up ahead looking for Bathstock is red and intercepted there by Chesson. Yannick has been looking for that stretch pass, trying to spring that far side winger on a rush like that. They haven't quite been able to connect yet. We must be seeing something in the Buffalo defense that leads them to believe that they can get in behind there. Goldsmith. Try to play it away. Taken back by Kunichika. Jess Jones back pass in front. Looking for Bowie and just out of reach. I don't know if Bowie thought that pass was going to come through like it did. Bowie, her back pass is knocked away and taken back here by the whale. Emily Flew is offsides. And there's some more jostling in the corner there. As we have reached the even three-minute mark here of the second period with a faceoff coming back out here to neutralize. Babstock and Fluke were exchanging some words on the far side with the Buffalo defenders. Yeah, I think maybe getting a little bit of advice to stop chopping at the necks of the players on the ice. <laughs> it doesn't it hasn't taken too long here in their first meeting in Buffalo this season for these two teams to renew acquaintances. Buffalo wins that draw. They've done very well here in the faceoff circle here in the second period. Yeah, leading in the first two, that's uh, definitely one thing that coaches have been working on uh, at practices, I'm sure. Bouye back the other way. Leaves it back to the point. Roosler shot padded away there by Levy. Hey, gluted, gloved down in front there by Murphy. Almost batted it directly back towards her own goal. Roosler, second shot through deflected, knocked away by Murphy. Bouye. Can't quite find the handle on it. Gets back one more time. That one slides through the crease and wide. Collides there hard with Murphy. Bouye and Fluke there for the whale, trying to win it free. 
Only as far as the point there off that pass for Kudachika. That one blocked it away one more time. There was another collision in front, and that's finally the one they're going to say enough is enough. It was, again, Colleen Murphy, I believe, Bouye one more time, and they collided about five times on that shift, and Murphy went a little bit after the puck, a little bit after the play was there, and will sit for two or less. Yeah, I mean, the, the officials definitely have to get a handle on some of this extracurricular activity before it gets out of hand. We've seen what can happen when it does, so uh, it's not, not a terrible call, but perhaps one that could have been made earlier in the shift. 2.05 remaining here in the second period. The Whale will go to their second power play. You see the penalty coming up here on your screen. There's that collision in front of the goal. Bouye did not have the puck, and hard to argue that one. There's a couple other ones he might have called also, <laughs> but I think that's a good call there. Kinnick and looking to get a late period goal here to draw within one here with the power play advantage. Rusler. Plays catch and gets it back. Rusler, pass in front. Where it's outside of the net, turned away by Levier. Orlando high up the glass. Chesson spinning with it, trying to find some open ice. Skimura there as well, kept in. Orlando, back to Rusler. Down low far side, Babstock. Babstock turning with it. Patiently waiting. 80 seconds remain here in the period. Rusler finds and fires, blocked away. It's back to Babstock. Babstock fires, that one blocked up over the net. Buffalo doing a great job challenging the shots here of Connecticut so far on this power play. Just a minute left now in it here for the Whale. Huertas. Waiting. Back to Goldsmith. Goldsmith's pass in front just couldn't quite connect. Had a player streaking through that. That was Brickner. Brickner gets it back here at the point. Down low. Connecticut able to change some players here with the power play. Goldsmith shots deflected through into the corner. It's pecked back up one more time. Babstock back to Brickner. Winds and fires deflected, knocked into the corner. Skamura trying to find a way out and does on her backhand. A big clear there for Haley Skamura. Buffalo able to get some fresh legs out there for the final 26 seconds of this Connecticut power play. Just 30 seconds remain here in the second period. Yeah, somehow despite 90 seconds in the zone, they were able to generate no shots where the whale. So a good kill so far by Buffalo. Fluke leaves it back behind. Shot fired through from a bad angle by Rusler is blocked away in front. Comes here to the near side. Lewicki able to chip it around. She won't quite be able to catch up with that one, but able to kill some seconds here. Four in this now two and one. And Buffalo is back to full strength. We have five seconds remaining as Levier will pad that one away. And with 2.7 seconds, we'll have one last face-off here in period number two. And she'll hold on here for a whistle. And Eric, you mentioned it there, that was the first one now, official shot on goal on that Connecticut power play. They had some shots, but Buffalo was doing a great job challenging and not letting anything through there to Amanda Levier in goal. Yeah, that's a little bit more what we're used to from this Buffalo power play, or I'm sorry, penalty kill. And, uh, you know, they've been so far locked out of uh, shorthanded goals, but Wiki was on her way to one there. Turn and fire down the ice. It would have been a nice thing if there was time for any Connecticut player to go down there and touch up. But with that, we are through. 40 minutes of play. The Buffalo Buttes with the mad minute there. It's about the midway point of the second period. A pair of goals from Jess Jones and Kristen Lewicki have taken a 2 to nothing advantage. Eric, when we stood here right before the second period was going to begin, I asked you how key the second period was for Buffalo and what they would have to do here considering their recent struggles in the third period of games. And you said they really need to score about two goals, and they did just that. Yeah, I looked in my magic uh, snowball, one of those snow globe things. I shook it up, and I said, how can Buffalo win this game? And two goals in the second period was what it came up with. So it turned out, hopefully, that it's right. Uh, you know, we still have 20 minutes of play. And as we've been discussing often on the broadcast, Buffalo not the best in those third periods. So they definitely needed this strong second. When a game is as even as this game was for the first almost full 30 minutes of contest. You look to your star players, you look to the names that you value, and you look at the top names on this Buffalo roster, and one of those is Jess Jones, and she really turned this team around almost single-handedly there with a couple strong shifts, a beautiful goal, and then creating a bunch of chances that eventually led to Lewicki's goal. Yeah, absolutely, and, and that came after she was, uh, took a penalty at the, on the boards that was kind of a 50-50 call, and uh, you know able to collect herself and still uh, have really an exceptional period. So what did you see that was different, if anything, for Buffalo offensively in terms of finally being able to get behind the Connecticut defense a little bit, create some spaces, a bunch of chances, and finally were able to get a couple past Ross, who just played very strongly here to this point in the contest? Well, we talked about how Buffalo scores their goals. It's usually a uh, rush in front of the net. They get, get make the goalie uh, make a save and kick it out in front and bury it. And, uh, and uh, you know, that's it's, uh, it seems to be Buffalo's bread and butter. So they need to go to that early and often. We're going to go down to Justin Eric. He's 
our sideline man here this afternoon. I'm here at Butte's defender, yeah, Lisa Chesson. <laughs> Thanks for doing this, Lisa. Now, the Whale are ha have a pretty aggressive breakout strategy today, and having a skater leave the zone pretty early and having someone hang back here and there. What kind of things are being done to neutralize that? You know, we just got to watch out for it. You know, if we have good puck possession, still know that someone might be flying, they're coming off the bench, but I think we're doing a really good job of maintaining that player. Now, the team, your team has had some struggles in the third period this season with just three goals for and 13 against. What do you have to focus on as a, as a group in this upcoming period to, to reverse that? Yeah, I think right now we're focusing on three games, the first, second, and the third. Uh, right now we won the second, um, so we want to win this third game here and um, kind of forget about the past and start a new future here. All right, thanks, Lisa. Have a good one. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Back to you guys. And thanks again to Justin for being our eyes and ears at ice level here tonight. And thanks to Lisa Chesson for taking some time out to talk with us here as well. A very strong second period for Buffalo. And we talked a lot about the offense. Let's take a moment here and talk about the Buffalo defense here tonight. They've been really changing defensive pairings, trying to find the right combination throughout different points of the season. But here tonight, a lot of Connecticut's chances when they've even been able to get off at sustained zone time. We talked about the first seven minutes of the second period. Connecticut basically had the puck for six and a half of the first seven minutes of this period. But Buffalo's defense here tonight has been outstanding in terms of keeping them to the outside. Do um, you think they finally found the right combination of six defenders and pairing them up? I mean, it's hard to say. You know, uh, Justin just spoke with Lisa Chesson, who kind of has, has has a hard time uh, getting to games, especially on the road. So we're glad to have her here, and it does uh, mess with the lines a little bit, but these pairings are definitely Buffalo's top six. Yeah, anytime that you can find a U.S. national team defender and bring them onto your roster for the day. we got to look at some second period stats here for you guys. Uh, Buffalo finally able to put a couple in the net there. Dominating some face-offs as well, but again, shots still very even. Both teams have taken two penalties, no conversions on the power play. Connecticut's done a lot right here in this game, but they just haven't been able to find that good shift, that great chance that's been able to propel them on the scoreboard. Yeah, and we talk about shots, and I think uh, quality of shots comes into play here. You mentioned Buffalo's defense managing to keep things to the outside for the most part, and that's going to be important for the, the uh, teams going forward, especially in this third period where Buffalo is so weak. They're not to be the horse to death, but Buffalo has not been a great third period team. We'll see if that changes here. We've got to look at some second period highlights here for you. A couple of goals here included in this here as well. And we start off with Jess Jones. Yeah, you know, just picks that weak side corner. Uh, the sliding defender you mentioned maybe screen Rosman a little bit, but it's and just here's a goal Lewicki scorer here. goal. And just talk about Jones again creating that chance, fires that pass through, gets through to Jordan Nott, and then Kristen Lewicki. It's usually her speed that is her skill that really helps her put, her, put pucks in the net here, but today it was just her hands and her patience there outweighing Rossman. Uh, Eric, what, quickly, what do you think Buffalo has to do here differently in the third period if they're not going to allow the other team to dominate them like they did last two weeks? Well, you can't have 10 minutes in your own zone again, so they need to come out stronger uh, in the top of the third period, and you know if they can maintain possession and get that third goal, that's going to give them a big boost uh, to finish out the game. 2-0 Buffalo after 40 minutes of play. We'll be back here with you with third period action when we return to the NWHL Twitter Game of the Week. Back here with you live on the NWHL Twitter Game of the Week. It is two to nothing Buffalo through 40 minutes of play on the strength of goals from Jess Jones and Kristen Lewicki, both of theirs second of the year. Can I just say I will never get sick of seeing that pile on at the end of the championship game. It was a pretty great feeling. I remember watching it with a bunch of friends who had never watched a Buttes game before and getting all emotional. <laughs> it was wonderful. It's a great team bonding experience it's for dust, all of us. It's dusty in here. I'm not crying. I mean, so went to, we got some highlights here for you guys of how we got to this point. You can drag through play there. Buffalo really struggled to get on the board early on. But here on what looked like a broken play, it was Jess Jones finding the puck on her stick and depositing it calmly into the back of the net. We're talking about quick hands, talking about patience, waiting out the defenseman, waiting out Rossman. Easy play for Jones there to net it to make it one nothing in the second goal comes up here on this play from Kristen Lewicki, following up his plans from Ott, and a calm backhand into the net. We're underway here in the third period here today at Harbor Center, downtown Buffalo, New York, is your home for your NWHL Twitter game of the week. The last game for these teams here in the year 2017. Jones takes it back up to Bowie, her shot blocked away there, into the corner there by Bouye. She picks it back up here now. Connecticut looking to find an answer here. Buffalo has been susceptible to losing leads here in third periods of games. Rachel H. Shot through blocked away by Levier. Loose in the slot for a second. Bouye trying to find the handle on it. Knocks it back there. Followed through by Roosler and blocked away by Levier. 
Kelly Babstock fresh off the bench looking for some room. Kelly Babstock fires off the top of the goalie stick of Levier and in behind the goal. Babstock circling, still with it. Kelly Babstock up high. Bouye shot through traffic, that one blocked away, caught up high off of Emily Fluke and knocked back out here to neutralize. Good start there for the Whale. Aid drags it back in. All by herself there, trying to wait for her teammates to come on for a change. Fires it around far side and is able to find Sam Faber. Looking back for Babstock, but taken away there by Casorso, who leaves it for Lewicki. Passes to the blue line, but kept in by Beatty. Babstock has to drag it inside, had it taken away. Again by Lewicki. Orlando holds the line and keeps it in. Faber. She'll turn and fire. That one knocked away. A weird angle deflection comes through the crease and wide. Knocked ahead, Rebecca Vint trying to find the handle. She does, cuts inside, Vint fires that one up over the net and off the glass in behind of Rossman. Lewicki trying to jam it in near side, finds the handle one more time, back into the slot, Shroka shot through, kicked away by Rossman. Still loose in the slot. Edney fires through, couldn't find a friendly stick and that one floats wide where it's picked up by Lisa Chesson. In front of the goal, looking back there for Shroka but out of her reach. Edney back to Shroka. That one deflected away by Vint. Babstock left real early there, trying to get behind the Buffalo defense, but the pass was knocked away. Shroka in behind the Connecticut goal, off a loose glove in the corner. Juggled back to neutralize there by Elia. Turned in by Murphy. Beatty. Trying to take it away. Elia pressuring, forcing them back into their own end, and now takes it away. Maddie Elia, her pass though. Out of the reach of his intended target. Backhanded around here to Barabo. Out of the reach of Orlando. Beatty trying to knock it up ahead. Can't take it away. That pass from Ott looking in front for Shurub is knocked away. Elia looking back across to Murphy, but out of her reach. The Connecticut trying to get the handle on it here. Done. Definitely a better start for Buffalo to this first period. No, it's third period. It's the first third period of the night, Eric. It's close enough. <laughs> Puertas chasing after it beats out the icing. Spinning away from Murphy. Done down there as well. Gets it back to Rachel A. Back up high. Bouye. Taken away by Elia. Maddie Elia with Jess Jones <laughs> tried to filter that pass through and kicked down there by Rusler. Bouye. Looking back for Rusler, that one kicked away. Stung out a little bit as Rusler circles back to the puck. Deflected and knocked away there by Levier. Bouye. That angle shot is in. A lot of, of traffic Levier. in front of Levier. Yeah. I don't think she ever saw it. Yeah, I think that's something that we talked about earlier on is uh, getting those pucks through, through traffic. Connecticut's doing a better job of getting the bodies in front of the net so far tonight. And you heard the puck hit the pad of Levier and somehow still find its way into the back of the net. Um, disappointing start for Buffalo, who was controlling play early in the third. It's one of the old hockey adages that sometimes you just got to throw the puck at the net. And that's exactly what Amanda Bouye just did. A rather innocent looking shot. You can't even see where it leaks through because of the Connecticut player that's Emily Fluke who was standing there on the back door. And you heard it kick off of the right pad of Lavier and just snuck in there on the near side post. And Buffalo seeing some ghosts of games past here where they've struggled in the third periods. Connecticut jumps out now, has cut the lead to one. and. Over 16 minutes remain here in the third period. It's a one goal game. And they're leading five shots to two already early on in the third. Babstock's pass in front, knocked away by Burns. Buffalo scrambling now a little bit as Connecticut looks to find a second. Taken away here by Rebecca Vint. Two on two through center ice. Had it knocked away, able to turn and knock it back into the zone where Schroker will go chasing after it. Orlando, first one there for Connecticut. Followed up by Shroka, takes it away here to Lewicki. Lewicki down low to Vint. Vint leaves it for Lewicki, turned away by Rossman, who holds on for a faceoff and a big early chance there. A great, great save Buffalo. by Rossman, and we're going to get another look at that goal. Here's uh, the play, play from behind the net, so maybe we'll see where it sneaks in. Yeah, it's going to come out loose here near side. There's Bouye. It just turns and like, wow, out yeah. the top of the pad. Top, top of the pad and in, yeah. Uh, Levier needs to maybe get the the blocker down on, on top of the pad there to make that safe. I, I really don't think she ever saw anything. The way the Fluke was screening that shot, I don't think she saw anything until it hit off her leg. Fluke leaves it there for Huertas. Connecticut with new life. 
Rachel Abe shot through, blocked away, loose in the slot for a second. The flex far side, where it's kicked in one more time by Huertas. Bouye, back to Aid. Out of the reach of Rusler, kept in by Huertas one more time. Down low, Fluke. Back for Bouye. Taken away by Lewicki, but kept in one more time by the whale. Deflected play on the side of the net is turned away by Levier. Emily Fluke has found her little bit of room there in front of the Buffalo goaltender and has set up shop, creating a good chance there for her team. Babstock spinning, back to Aid. Her shot blocked away there by Shroka. Back to the point, Babstock, far side. That one hops away from Roosler into the corner. Edney trying to win it around, backhands it behind her own goal. And the first one there again is Kelly Babstock. A great job stick checking her there by Shroka, wins it back to neutralize. Beatty. Leaves it for Goldsmith. Goldsmith's pass across. Fresh legs off the bench of Sam Faber. Faber's pass through the slot. Couldn't find anyone. It's going to get to the blue line, but not out. Beatty. Back to Faber. That one deflects away. Brickner chasing after it. Back end into the corner to Goldsmith. Trying to get away from Chesson. Goldsmith, one hand on her stick. Pivots in the slot, that one deflects it away. Gets loose to Beatty, back in behind the Buffalo goal. In the slot, deflects away from its intended target favor. Brickner switching spots. Goes down low into the slot, can't quite find the handle. Skimura trying to win it up ahead, and she does. Back out here to neutralize. Beatty. Up high off of Chesson, in behind the Buffalo goal, where it's picked up here by Sarah Edney. Edney far side, taken there on her backhand by Shurub. Not even quite to center ice before the Whale read it. He caught it off, a back pass got away from them a little bit there. They're forced back to their own end. Fluke leaves it there for Bouye, the goal scorer, trying to create some room. Amanda Bouye, that's loose on Levier. That one padded away loose in the slot. Penalty coming up here to Buffalo. Connecticut swarming their pads. They've made again by Levier, as picked up by Shurub. And Connecticut, who have just turned on the Jets here in the third period, will go to their third power play of the night. Chastain had been out on the ice for a long time, so maybe a little penalty of exhaustion there. Uh, she's going to get two minutes to rest here. So uh, Buffalo needs to hang tight on this uh, penalty kill. You see the play coming to the middle, and Chastain reaching in, uh, pulling down the player, streaking to the net. The puck wasn't there, so that's definitely interference. What a good start to the period there for number three for Connecticut, Amanda Bouye getting the goal. And there's another chance there that she creates and draws a penalty. And with 13-21 remaining here in the third period, the Connecticut Whale with a chance here with the power play advantage to draw this game even. It is Chesson, as Eric mentioned, who will sit for two minutes for hooking. Two minutes or less, I should say. But Connecticut wins the offensive Knock draw. On wood. I don't have any wood anywhere near me. No. Rachel A. That one deflected through in front. Backhand chance. Levia gets the pad across. Referee blows the whistle. She turned two away. Puck never covered it, let loose. I think the referee lost sight of it, but it was never in the back of the net. And a fantastic save, series of saves by Levier to get the first and the second and get that leg down. And just there's nowhere to go once the puck is laying there in front of the pad. They can't even really lift it over top of her. So. That's uh, something that we see from her a lot. We talked in the second period about Connecticut's power play that wasn't able to get any shots going. That's all of 15 seconds in, and that was two. They are smelling blood in the water. What a play by Aid to keep it on line. Goldsmith turned away by Levier, sticks it away. There's a Buffalo player. It's Sarah Casorso who is down and struggling to get up at the Buffalo blue line. That is why there was that whistle blown as soon as Buffalo had established possession for a second there. I didn't quite see what happened uh, to Sarah Casorza, who is now back to her feet. Looks like she may have collided with Goldsmith there at the blue line, or with Rachel Aid, I believe it was, who won the puck away. And another great chance there with a power play there for Connecticut. And as this game draws closer, uh, I think the physicality might pick up a little bit, so uh, was... teams have to be ready, but still sit, play disciplined. Rusler to Orlando. Still a minute 20 remain here on this Connecticut power play that has been looking very dangerous so far. Goldsmith, pass across, intercepted, read very well there by Vint, but you can't find the handle to clear it out, but followed up there by Kaylin Shroka and down the ice. A big clear there for Buffalo's penalty killers. Good play by Buffalo to clog up the middle and a couple of whacks at it gets the puck clear. Orlando. Pass ahead. Connecticut looking to get set back up with a stretch pass for its intended target there, Bouye. 
is intercepted. Knocked ahead by Murphy and right back down the ice. A great play there by Colleen Murphy. She did not have a lot of room to clear that puck, but able to do so. Now just 45 seconds taken away by Bowie in behind the play. Corinne Bowie fires up over the crossbar. She is dangerous from any position on the ice and she will never give up on a play. And uh, speaking of, that's a great job taking it back away. Back in behind the Connecticut goal, killing more time and just hounding the defenders. Just 26 seconds remain here on the Connecticut penalty. One on five goes Bowie and she wins the day. <laughs> Goldsmith's pass ahead is intercepted by Burns who will calmly deposit it. Right back down behind the Connecticut goal and the Buffalo penalty killers have been coming up here big at a big moment here in this contest. A textbook play penalty kill by Buffalo and hopefully it gives them a little, the same spark that the two goals did early on in the second. Bad stock in behind the goal. Still three seconds remaining here on on the power play. Not quite back to full strength yet. They are now. As Chesson rejoins the play, it's loose in the slot, turned away by Levier. Pinball's back to the point. It's kept in. Aid leaves it for Barabo. Back to Aid. It's a fluke. Deflected away in the slot. Brickner back, can't chance, is knocked away by Chesson, who has iced the puck. And as Jordan Barabo calmly goes back and skates to it, so Joanna Barabo. Too many J names and <laughs> too many shifts. Getting Barabo and Brickner flipped. As we have an icing call here, 10.57 remaining, still in third period action. So we talked about the uh, shot differential for Buffalo in the third period, uh, almost nonstop so far tonight. And the Whale has managed to get 11 shots on goal in the third period, while Buffalo's only had three. So, you know, this definitely isn't the start that Buffalo was looking for, but. This is about the time that they kicked it up in the second period. Hopefully they can get things going. Buffalo has decided to use their timeout here and not the worst time for coaches Muni and Seelig to uh, look at doing so. Got the, some skaters out there who were killing the penalty trapped out there for a long time. And you just mentioned the, the tide of shots that the Whale have been riding here in this third period. Not a bad time to try to stop a little bit of that momentum either. Yeah, and you know, um, because Connecticut was maintaining possession so well at the beginning of the period, lines got shuffled around, people got stuck out on the ice. So this gives Ceiling a chance to kind of reset everything, get the lines back together, get the defensive pairs back together, and uh, just gen talk about generating some plays, getting some shots on, on Rossman, who's really had a very easy third period so far. 10.57 still on the clock here in period number three. We've seen it the last couple of weeks against the Riveters, where Buffalo has come out in the third period and everything that's gone well for them in the second period or the first period has just completely stopped as soon as they went back into the tunnel for the third period. What do you think will be key here for them as they circle up at their bench in terms of just getting back on track here to what they were doing well in the second period? Well, as much as we want to talk about it, maybe the best thing for them to do is not even think about it and just focus on the next play or the next rush or the next you know, small thing that they have to do. And after these series of small things becomes a big thing, maintaining zone possession or, you know, a good play in front of the net. And something that'll spark the team again and get them going. Face off, one by the whale. Shot blocked away and behind the goal, picked up by Haley Skimura. Up ahead to Jones, off the glass, to the blue line and kept in. Chess will get a second whack out of there, lost in the skates of the far side linesman. And then the puck off the far side linesman and back to neutral ice. Sometimes when you're wearing the stripes, you just can't quite get out of the way. Hockey pucks are a little bit unpredictable. Lisa Chesson, back in behind her own goal. One hand on her stick to the blue line, kept in there by Beatty. Skamura circling back. Buffalo had a desperate need of a change. To the line, backhanded and kept in again. A great play there made by Goldsmith, but finally Skamura able to skate it ahead and let her teammates go off for a change. Bank pass out of the reach of its intended target, Goldsmith. Knocked down there by Edney, taken here by Maddie Elia. Elia drags it in for a backhand chance, trying to jam it in near side. as a big collision in front of the Connecticut goal there as the defender, Beatty, did not enjoy the fact that the Buffalo forward tried to catch a number when she gets off the ice. Yeah, and a nice play Just by sure. Elia to cut to the front of the net and kind of lay, lay the puck out in front of Rosman for somebody to clean it up, which is what Sherrod was trying to do, maybe a little bit late to the play, but um, you know, this, these are the kinds of rushes that Buffalo's going to have to take advantage of. You see Elia cut to the front here, um, trying to get Ros Rosman to move off the post, and unfortunately she does not. Vint picks the puck up, backhand pass in behind the play to stroke in front for Lewicki, and just couldn't quite find the target. That line has been clicking more and more as this night goes on here for Buffalo. Vint able to hold the wall there, keep the pressure on. Rebecca Vint tries to spin out. Back up high, Edney shot through traffic, looking for Lewicki on the back door and out of her reach. Murphy walks it down the line there. 
Back to Lewicki, spinning away. Kristen Lewicki into the slot pass across, looking for Shroka. And the college teammates just not quite able to get on the same page. I'm curious to, to speak to Ryan Aquali and see what he sees of Buffalo that he thinks his team can defend them uh, five on four in the zone and keep that cherry picker back by the blue line. Elia not quite able to work it through. Shuro following it up. Back to Elia. High up the glass. Back down low to Elia. She works in behind the Connecticut goal. Strong on her stick, waiting for some help. Surrounded by white jerseys. Skamura takes it back for Buffalo. Skamura backhand chance, sticked away by Rossman. Elia and Skamura establishing tons of possession. Pass in front, looking back for sure, out of her reach. Connecticut with some chance to get some numbers back the other way. Some players, they have a long shift. A great pay by Fluke. Goes right around Burns. Beckett chance turned away by Levier. Elia coming back, would have taken a slashing penalty. She did. And I'm going to be honest, as far as the coaches go, they might act mad about some penalties. Some of them like that one, they're going to be a little less mad about. Elia had to do everything she could to slow down Emily Fluke, who just completely blew by Jordan Burns at the Buffalo Blue Line. Yeah, and here we go with the, you see the, the play there. Uh, Levier did, did well to keep on it, but uh, you know, Elia got the stick up right at the last second and, and got a hold of, of Fluke, who was streaking to the net. You see Connecticut captain Sam Faber maybe appealing for a bit of a penalty shot there. And there's Emily Fluke, who's had a big hand in her team's success here in the third period, screening Levier on the goal, creating a chance there, having another couple chances here, and Connecticut continues to keep the pressure on. That one deflected through the crease and just wide right off the faceoff. Connecticut's fourth power play of the night. They are 0 for 3, but their third one was by far their best. That one backhanded out and down the ice there by Chesson. Rossman slows it down, fires it up ahead here, trying to spring her team back the other way. Bank pass out of the reach of its intended target, speaking of Emily Fluke, and back out to neutral ice. Baraba, knocked away by Kunichika. One more time, forced to reset. Brickner to Fluke. Stood up by Edney. But able to carry it through to Babstock. Kelly Babstock, bad angle shot. Caught Levier leaning a little bit off that post. But Levier able to hold on there and cover for a faceoff. Everybody getting a little bit choppy down low. A uh, few sticks to midsections. And like I said, as, as this game comes to a close and, and maintains this level of closeness, uh, I think things are going to pick up physically a little bit. But uh, really, you know, not, not a bad penalty kill so far. Courtney Kunichika definitely keeping the puck out of the zone for a couple of seconds there was a good job for Buffalo. Ott turning with it and able to clear it right off that faceoff. 115 remaining here on the Connecticut power play. 742 and counting still here in our third period. Connecticut's been able to cut this to a 2-1 to one game. Vint backhands it. Back down to the blue line, taken back by Goldsmith, but just out of the reach of its intended target, forcing Orlando back in behind her own net. Orlando. Pass here, near side picked up. Full head of steam there by Roosler through neutral ice. Roosler patted away by Levy into the corner. Bouye, back to Huertas, back to Orlando. Roosler. Plays catch with Orlando, gets it back. Rusler shot through, blocked. Orlando at the half wall, back up high. Rusler waiting for a shooting lane to open up, fires that one through off the mask of Levier. Loose in the slot, picked up by Shroka. Trying to turn and find something to do with it. 20 seconds remain here in the Buffalo penalty. Pinned to the wall. Content to kill a few seconds, but danger far from, far from over when you're pinned in behind your own net, killing a penalty. Down to one knee, Shroka wins it around to Ott. Ah, skates ahead to some open ice. Taken away by Huertas. And now back the other way. Jordan Ott with a great effort. Kills off the penalty. Jordan Ott works it in. Lost it in her skates. But some help coming off the bench there. There's Vint. Out there with Elia. Leaves it for Sherub. Sherub works it inside. Save made by Rossman. Elia. Pinballs away from Orlando. Shurub, first one there, trying to spin up the wall. Back down low to Elia. Collides there with Baraba, who takes it away for the whale. Six minutes remain here in this third period. It is two to one. Shurub leaves it there for Skimura. Alias Skimura, one hand on her stick, strong possession. Backhand chance slides through the crease and wide. 5.45 still to go here in the period as Orlando deflects that one to the corner. Shurub. Switching spots, trying to leave it there for Chesson, who joins the rush. Lisa Chesson spinning with it, waiting. Down low, 
Elia looking for something to open up. Elia, bad angle shot is blocked away by Rossman. Good established zone time here for the Buttes. Skimura shot blocked away into the corner. Sherb spinning, trying to keep on it, and does. Down low behind the goal to Elia. Elia. Edney blocked away. Taken away by the Connecticut captain. Here comes Sam Faber. Two on two the other way. Faber into the slot. Looking for Babstock, but out of her reach. Chesson. Backhand pass behind her goal here. Jess Jones looking for Shurub. Able to get that pass up ahead. Shurub turns and fires it in. She'll go off for a change. Rossman sees Jones coming in and will pounce right back on that puck and hold on for a faceoff with 4.57 remaining here in our third period. And Eric, this is going to be a, you can feel it, just a very tight, tight, hotly contested final five minutes of the game. Yeah, and the reason that Buffalo was able to maintain such good possession is once again, Aquali had Babstock hanging out by the opposing blue line. And uh, Buffalo was five on four, did a really good job of getting possession and getting some shots on. Huertas tries to play it up ahead. Good to see Sarah Casorsa back on the ice there. She went down awkwardly a few minutes ago. Turned and fired back ahead by Chesson, but I don't think it touched off anyone. It didn't, and they have iced the puck. So a good chance here for Connecticut to set up in their offensive zone with 440 remaining. Still looking for one more answer. They'll need at least one more if they're going to play for more than the next 440. Yeah, and a couple of, a couple of odd notes. Uh, Jordan Ott, at the end of the Buffalo penalty kill, had a break down the ice. Meta Ely was trying like crazy to get out of the penalty box, but the, uh, she got stuck on the door and ended up falling on the ice. So almost a two-on-one break for Buffalo, uh, but foiled by the door. Classic door moment. <laughs> Jess Jones through center ice. Up ahead to Kunichika. Kunichika had it knocked off her stick there. Contested well by Fluke. Buffalo, though, able to hold on to it. Bowie spinning with it. Gets it to Jess Jones back past just out of the reach of Corinne Bowie and taken back here by the whale. Bouye. Casorso. Only as far as the blue line. Knocked right back down by Huertas. Eight across. Back it comes here. Huertas. Turns and fires into the catching glove of Levier, who is going to play it on to Burns. Burns ahead. Tipped ahead here by Rebecca Vint, able to drag it inside. Vint, creating space all by herself. Able to create some room into the corner. Loses her footing, though, and is taken back by Faber. Trying to spring that stretch pass there to Babstock. Didn't get her, but Babstock's going to be the first one down there. Babstock jostling with Murphy. We're under four minutes to go here in our third period. Taken away there by Jordan Ott. Looking for Shroka, but kept in by Orlando for a second until it pinballs here to Kristen Lewicki. Lewicki trying to go around Goldsmith. Play was off sides there for a second. Shroka turning back now as her teammates get back onside. Jordan Ott takes center ice, turns and fires it in. Shroka, first one there for Buffalo. Kaylin Shroka waiting. Floats that one back, was trying to get back to Ott at the blue line, but couldn't quite get it to her. Rossman stops it in behind her goal. And the Whale looks to take it back the other way. Barabo, hounded by Skimura. Huerta seeing some pressure as well. Both Skimura and Elia all over the Connecticut defense here, making it difficult to get out of their own end, but the Whale do. Back the other way. Barabo shot patted away by Levier. Knocked off ahead and back out to center ice. That shot by Barabo, Connecticut's 35th of the night. There's 28 now for Buffalo. Rachel A chasing after, collides with Chesson. Chesson leaves it there for Murphy. Murphy up ahead to Skimura. Bank pass right in front of her own bench. Took a bad bounce, but it caught off the official and knocked right back into the Buffalo end. Chesson, calm, cool, and collected as one can be, waiting for a teammate to present themselves. And Buffalo able to knock it back down towards the Connecticut end. 2-17 and counting, still to go here in this third period. Connecticut looking for one more answer to tie the game. That one patted away there by Levier. Scooped up by Chesson. Back into the air by Goldsmith. Taken back. We'll keep our eye on Rossman in the whale goal. Backhand kept in there by Rusler. Back to the blue line and taken ahead by Schurer. She's going to bank it out ahead. That one is going to go all the way down. Looked like it was going to slow down enough, and it didn't. I, that was yeah, going for a nice and call. I thought she was going to get lucky there. But, uh, you know, not a, not a bad period so far by Buffalo. Maybe the best third period of their season so far. And even though uh, Connecticut is, is putting the shots on goal, Buffalo is answering as much as possible, especially being shorthanded for a couple of minutes there. So, 153 still on the clock. Rossman still in her crease. We'll see if and when Connecticut decides to go for the extra attacker. Kept in there by Jordan Brickner. Babstock down there as well, but spun away here. Elia taken right back away by Faber. Orlando. Barabo shot through traffic, blocked away. 
Back out here to neutralize. Picked right back up by Orlando. Across, Brickner, Goldsmith. Faber leaves it around for Babstock. Babstock under 90 seconds to play. Goldsmith. Pass to the point. Kept in by Rusler off the bench. Deflected. It's loose in the crease for a second. Loose in front of the net. Chance sprawling play is blocked by Kudachika. That was going in. And a great effort play. There is a penalty. I believe Connecticut sent their extra attacker too early. Rossman had made it back to the bench. There was a sixth skater out. Referee immediately signaling, and Buffalo gets a big break. Some miscommunication at the whale bench is going to cost them big. Yeah, 70 it's, seconds left. It's an important 70 seconds for Buffalo. Uh, I have a feeling that uh, we... And we're going to look here at exactly what exactly happened in front of the Buffalo net. Levier gets a piece of the original shot. It deflects away. And then you'll see the puck come loose here. And then it's 36 in blue. Courtney Kunichika, who just sacrifices her body to block that one away. Yeah, beautiful deflection, too. If she deflects it straight back, that's a goal. Somehow she manages to get her elbow on it in a manner that sends it to the corner. And uh, yeah, got a timeout by the Connecticut Whale. Uh, not a bad time to take it as they're... Uh, they're in their last 70 seconds before totally defining themselves as the last place team in the NWHL. So I may have misinterpreted the referee's signal, which is really confusing to me. I do not know why they blew the play dead. There has not been a penalty, as far as I can tell, although it looked like there were seven Connecticut Whale players on the ice. And out of all of that, Connecticut's taking the timeout, but appears to still be at full strength. Yeah, there's no, uh, no door open in a penalty box, and I'm... I'm wondering if they were calling a collision with Levier in front of the goal then or something like that that would have slowed down the action. She was slow in getting to her feet after the scramble that we just showed in front of the goal. I'm wondering if that was what the near side official had deemed to be the stoppage in play as Connecticut was still swarming there. Rossman had just headed back to the bench and she'll be sent back out now with a faceoff fourth coming back into her net. So we will see what comes of this. 70 seconds remain and as Eric mentioned, the loser of this game will go into 2018 in fourth place in the NWHL. The winner is guaranteed at least third, possibly second, depending on the outcome, if, Bo if Boston can finally solve the New York Riveters to the Metropolitan. God. Yeah, it makes, uh, makes the tonight's, the jar. tonight's game between uh, <laughs> no, t the tonight's game between the Riveters and the Pride that much more important. And we will. We will get the too many men on the, okay. too many women on the ice penalty. I feel justified because that <laughs> certainly looked like what they were signaling. Sweet vindication before the holiday break. So Buffalo will have a chance to spend the remainder of this game on the power play. With just over a minute remaining, Sarah Edney in behind her own goal. Around there to Skimura. Pass ahead, deflected, knocked down, and Connecticut's gone for the extra skater. So it's five on five with the penalty being served there by the Whale. That one knocked up into the netting, and we'll have a faceoff forthcoming with just under 48 seconds remaining. Cassie Dunn is serving the bench miner for too many skaters. Faceoff will come out here to the right of Levier. So a good chance here for Connecticut. They're going to get an offensive zone faceoff out of this. And you can see exactly where they're setting up, trying to win that draw clean and get a quick shot off. But it's one back there. A big faceoff win by Maddie Elia. And here comes Skimura. Empty net in front of her. Skimura diving block there by the defender. It was Rusler, But Skimura will not be denied. Picks up the rebound and puts it in. And Buffalo is able to hold on here tonight. That'll make it 3-1. to one. And a big goal and a big effort there. About as difficult as an empty net goal as Haley Skimura is ever going to score. Yeah, and she took an extra bump at the end for her for her efforts. But, uh, you know, she's been hot at home. Her uh, Buffalo native played played uh, hockey at Nichols with uh, line mate Maddie Elia. And she gets her second goal here in the Harvest Center tonight. So Buffalo now is all but iced in. Connecticut will have some chances here. Buffalo did score two goals in 46 seconds, so it's not entirely out of the question for Connecticut to turn a couple in quickly. We've seen some crazy games between these two teams here. Elia, pass ahead, is intercepted by Orlando. She'll bring it back in, play is way off sides, and we'll have a faceoff forthcoming. Cassie Dunn, who had just served that penalty, was about seven steps into the zone. So 23.2 seconds remaining for Buffalo. What will prove to be a big victory. They had some difficult games recently, especially last weekend against the Riveters, leading an undefeated team through 40 minutes and just falling apart. We talked about it, and we've kind of beaten that horse to death here. But in the third period, could not find any offense. And here today, able to go ahead, get a big win, get themselves out of that tie for last place in the league, and go ahead and focus on tonight's game to maybe even find themselves in the upper half of the league. Yeah, it wasn't a uh, perfect final frame, but it was definitely the best of the season so far. And I'm sure 
They're happy to escape with a with a two goal win and only one goal conceded by Amanda Levier on 30 sh 38 shots. Yeah, we talked before the game about that and there is the final horn as the Buffalo Buttes swarm Amanda Levier, who I feel is probably your first star of the game here, no matter how you slice it, 37 saves. The Buffalo Buttes with a big victory. Three to one is your final score here tonight. It wasn't always easy, it wasn't always pretty, but a victory nonetheless for the home side as they will end their 2017 calendar year with a W. Yeah, I mean, it's important to be 500 at this point in the season, I think, with only uh, one game shy of halfway through the season. And it seems like they're kind of cleaning up some of the mistakes that have cost them the three games so far. So it's, a, it's good to see that growth, too. So kind of a tale of two halves of the period here for Buffalo. Uh, the end of the third period sounded like we were reading the same old third period Butte script where Connecticut really came out, was able to create some chances. It seemed like that goal that they scored there by Bouye really just sprung their offense. They're like, okay, now we've got them where we want them. In the next six to eight minutes, they just spent just swarming Buffalo. But the Buttes, just somewhere right after that timeout, were able to come out, they were able to collect themselves, they were able to establish some offensive pressure, and it was a much better end of the third period than, as you mentioned, we've seen from them in quite some time. Yeah, and I think it's important to mention that that little bit of coaching there was an icing. Uh, the team had been on the ice for quite some time. That was a long shift, so Sealing takes the time out and, as you said, takes takes the moment to collect the team, and from there it was really all Buffalo. And, you know, I, I, I have to mention it again. It's a strange hill to die on for uh, Equale to, to leave that cherry picker back by the blue line, and you have to wonder, you know, if they weren't playing five on four in their zone, would they have been better able to get the puck out even if there wasn't someone waiting there for it. So Yeah, there were a couple times, and I, they were down there a lot, but a couple times even specifically as you watch the new goaltender handshake at center ice between Kelsey Newman and Amanda Levier, noted internet superstars. Oh, I, like, I like the bow and the meal. That's uh, Those are some pretty solid moves in goaltender equipment, I've got to be honest with you. Yeah, oh, sure. they go again. And, and they got it right this time. No? Uh, not not Levier's best play of the night, I'd have to say. Uh, <laughs> Her glove has been much better than it is right now. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to say uh, down in, uh, in the third period penalty kill when she had that laid out flat and made those two straight saves that uh, eventually led to a stoppage in play. So Buffalo able to end their year. They'll be home again to Boston uh, for their next game here. January 6th is the next home date that will be here with you in a game that will be very much for second place in the league. A Boston team has a chance tonight to get a big win against the Riveters. As you mentioned, the parity in the league, it's really hard to find a lot of things separating these teams. And even tonight, a Connecticut team that really struggled was maybe one or two good bounces away from winning this game. Yeah, they, they held control for a lot, which is something that Buffalo definitely can't continue to allow teams to do. You know, a, a team like the Riveters might be better equipped for it, but there's no way they should be letting this Connecticut team do that to them. So it's kind of a natural stopping point, midway point of the season here with a couple weeks off for the Buttes here. What do you think is going to be key for them if they're going to go ahead and really challenge Metropolitan in terms of tops of the standings? Well, something that uh, Coach Rick Sealing has talked about uh, over the... Over the over the uh, last few weeks of the season has been conditioning for the team and hopefully they can get the team together and uh, you know practice a little bit more consistently that'll develop the chemistry that they've been waiting for to, to come together. Yeah, it's something we noticed a lot with them last season, that team that eventually won the Isabel Cup. They uh, had some difficulty early season. We're gonna go down one last time here to Justin Erig, our sideline reporter here for you this afternoon. I'm here at Buse Forward, Maddie Leah. Thanks, Maddie. Now, you were playing out there like you were you possessed today, creating opportunities for yourself and teammates in what I think was your best game of the season. Was there just more room out there for you today, or what was it? I mean, it was our last game of uh, 2017, and uh, we've kind of had a rough past few games, so I kind of just wanted to leave it all on the ice today. Now, this is your, your team's first time seeing the whale since the first game of the season. Was it difficult to prepare for a team you haven't seen in so long or so little? And what kind of things did you put in the game plan to get the W today? Yeah, I mean, we watched a little video. Um, we kind of knew what we had to come up against. They're hard. They battle hard on the puck. Um, so before the game, we just talked about working hard, kind of sh more shots on net because we've kind of been struggling with that. And I think that's uh, that's why we had success today. Right, great. Thanks, Betty. Yeah. Thank you. Bet you guys. And thanks to Justin again, and thanks to Maddie Elia for taking some time there before she goes back to her locker room to celebrate her victory. We got some final stats here for you for tonight. A game that was very hotly contested through 60 minutes. Actually, let's go to some highlights here for you guys first. Um, get you some goals here from our third period. So we're back to the second period, actually. Here's Jess Jones. That was the first goal of the game for Buffalo. And Eric, talk about patience. Yeah, her second in two games. And like I said, I think this is uh, Jess Jones coming out party. And here we see uh, from another angle, she just 
waits for the defender to come across and puts that uh, totally across the ice and inside the post. Uh, unstoppable there. Here's Kristen Lewicki's goal that followed that up just 46 seconds later and was really from the word go and that at that point that Buffalo was in control of this game offensively. Yeah, and both of these ended up being off of broken plays. I think it speaks to Buffalo's awareness a little bit, just being puck ready and, and taking advantage when mm -hmm. they can. Here's the Connecticut goal, and you'll see again, it's, it's hard to see from this angle. You see it a little bit better on the second play through. Just that bad angle shot. It looks rather innocuous like Levier's there the whole time, but she just doesn't hold the post and it was a big moment for Connecticut. They really swarmed there off this goal from Bouye. Yeah, and you, like you said, it sparked the team for quite some time, and it wasn't until Buffalo took that uh, um, timeout uh, until they were able to maintain, retain, regain control of the game. And here are your final stats here, guys. Shots Connecticut, especially with that strong third period, able to jump ahead. 38-29 final advantage in shots of a Buffalo. And you see there at the bottom, those face-offs were really key. It was very even through 20 minutes. But for the final 40 minutes, Buffalo was able to, especially at a lot of times, key times where they're stuck, long shifts in their own defensive zone, able to win a lot of key face-offs and get the puck out. And they were able to, by that kind of mitigate the pressure that the Whale were able to have. Both teams end up finishing 0 for 3 and 0 for 4, respectively. No one able to score on a power play. Buffalo able to get a couple good rushes there. And again, it was just that 46 seconds, that mad minute in the second period yeah. where they were able to do just enough offensively to hold off Connecticut. Thank you guys so much for spending your afternoon here with us. It was a great game here between these two teams here on the NWHL Twitter Game of the Week. For Eric Wolschlager and Justin Erig. my name is Jeff Boyd. Thank you so much. Since we won't be here with you until January 6th, have yourself a ha some happy holidays. Have yourself a happy new year. We look forward to being back with you here in 2018.